What's up, everyone? This is another Chris Course with your host, Chris. And in this episode, I want to show you guys how to use something called the Browser Sync plugin in tandem with Webpack so that whenever we make a change to one of our files, the browser is refreshed automatically. So you can see on the right hand side here that we have a very basic Webpack config setup. All we're doing is we're taking app.js and we're compiling it into build.js. So this is for module bundling purposes. If we want to pull modules into app.js, they'd be automatically bundled into build.js. But as we're going about development, obviously, if we're if we're kind of making changes to this file, we'd want them to be updated in the browser automatically rather than forcing us to go over here and then uh, type something like command R, control R to refresh the page automatically. That just gets cumbersome, annoying, and uh, we can do it automatically. So there's no point to not use something like browser sync to refresh our pages for us. So in order to install this browser sync plugin, the first thing we're going to need to do is install the browser sync webpack plugin so this is a plugin that connects browser sync to webpack uh, browser sync is its own individual plugin and that manages watching all of our files and making refreshes for the browser for us but in order to link it to webpack we need this browser sync webpack plugin so in order to install it we're going to go ahead and take this script right here we're going to throw that in the terminal and it's going to install uh, within our project directory and it's going to update our package.json file for us. So once that is installed, we're going to scroll down a little further and you're going to see a snippet for webpack config.js. And I'll full screen this so we can see it a little better. First thing we're going to want is to take this first line of code. We want to make sure that we're pulling in the plugin that we just downloaded. So we're going to head on over to webpack config and at the top of our file, we're going to go ahead and paste that in there. So now that we have the plugin being pulled in, we want to make sure that we're actually inserting it within our module export statement where Webpack actually looks for all the configuration. So in order to do that, we're just going to go ahead and copy everything from plugins to the bottom. And we're just going to go paste this right below our watch property. We want to make sure we add a comma here, otherwise Webpack will break when we run it. And we are going to paste in that plugins property. And I'm going to do a little bit of indentation here. I'm kind of anal about this for some reason. It's, it's good to be anal about this because it, it leads to clean code and you want to make sure your files are as clean as possible. So with this in place, we should be able to run Webpack or so you'd think, and then everything will work just peachily. But unfortunately that's not the case. We still need to do a few things here. So let's go over the properties within this browser sync plugin. This host property, this is the string that we would visit within the URL to visit our site once we run Webpack. So if I were to type in localhost into the browser, that would be step one in order to visit our site using browser sync. Step two would to be to take this port number and append it to the end of this host string. So in order to append it to the end of it, we need to make sure that port numbers, they are preceded by a colon. So we would have a colon there and then we insert the port number of 3000. And this is how we would visit our website using browser sync. Next up is the server property, and this is where we have all of our distribution files. The files that we actually want to send to the browser for users and the public to see. So we're not using a public directory, we are using a distribution directory, a dist directory. So we're going to go ahead and change public to dist just like that. So this is the basic setup. With this in place, we can go ahead and run Webpack in the terminal. but you're going to see that it cannot find a module called browser sync. So like I said, the plugin that we just installed, browser sync webpack plugin, this makes the connection between browser sync and webpack. But we first need to install the actual browser sync plugin. So let's go ahead and do that right now. If you're using npm, you can type npm install browser dash sync dash dash save dev and run that. And if you're using yarn, let me go over here to my sublime text editor. If you're using yarn, you can type yarn add browser sync dash sync dash dash dev uh, it's a little more succinct compared to the npm script whichever one you want to use is cool with me I, don't know. I, I personally prefer yarn just because it's a little faster than npm and i like the short commands compared to the long ones that npm usually possesses so let's wait for that to finish installing so you can see that it just finished now when we run webpack in the terminal let's watch what happens 
All right, so you're gonna see that it automatically opens up a link in our browser at localhost 3000, just like we went over when we covered the host and the port properties. So this is really cool. We have a server serving up our index.html file for us. And so now you think that whenever we make a change to this HTML file, it'll go ahead and update in the browser. So let's go ahead and try doing that. If I go ahead and delete this, hello h1, save it, you're gonna notice that nothing is updating automatically. And this is because we need to tell browser sync which files to watch before we actually run it within terminal. So right out of the box, browser sync manages and watches our app.js file, anything within our source directory. That's where Webpack kind of watches. You can see that we're specifying right here in our entry point. It's watching our app.js file and it's outputting everything into build.js. So by default, it'll automatically refresh everything within app.js. And we can watch this in action. Let's go ahead to app.js, open up our terminal. And you're going to see that we have our console log statement being outputted. Now, if I make a change to this, you can see I didn't, I didn't actually go over to the browser and refresh the page. It just automatically refreshed everything for us. And we lost our text, our h1 text, simply because I saved the file like that. But you can see whenever I'm saving it with an index.html, it's not actually updating. It'll only update automatically out of the box with app.js because that is our entry point file. So how do we make sure that it actually recognizes our index.html file and that it refreshes automatically whenever we make a change to it? Well, we need to add a files property, I believe it is. Let's go ahead and check out browser sync, files, see if I can find anything real quick. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a files property. We need to add a files property to our browser sync plugin. So we're gonna go ahead over here, add files, and this is going to be equal to an array, and it's going to contain a string. So here we can specify what additional files we want browser sync to watch, for whenever we make a change, and it'll automatically refresh these files in the browser for us. So since we have an index.html file within our distribution directory, we want to make sure that we're telling browser sync to watch all HTML files within distribution. So in order to do that, we are going to say, within the current directory, head on over to distribution and look for all HTML files, all files that end in .html. And with this in place, this should do it. So since whenever we make a change to Webpack config.js, we need to make sure that we restart uh, Webpack in the terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. We're gonna go ahead and run Webpack. And it's going to reopen in the browser for us automatically, which is pretty nice. So now the moment of truth. Let's head on over to index.html, delete hello, and we should see it refresh automatically. Fingers crossed. All right, yeah, there we go. So really cool stuff here for static sites. This is how you get browser sync or webpack set up for static sites, sites that don't actually need a backend language to compile. If you'd like to use a backend language to compile all of your content and hook it up with webpack and browser sync, there is an extra step that you need to take, which I'm going to go over in the next video. But this is a very simple way to get webpack and browser sync set up for static sites. Now, whenever I make a change in here, whether it be I add a paragraph tag and some dummy text, it's going to update automatically. It saves you a ton of time. Uh, this can really save like up to hours worth of time in the long run because you're not going back and forth. And my wrist hurts so bad from work of me just changing uh, between tabs from command tab and it might save you carpal tunnel syndrome in the long run as well. Um, so this is how you do it, guys. If you have any other files that you'd like to watch, you just go ahead and add them to this files array. You can go ahead and add a comma here, add another string, and tell it what files you want it to watch specifically. Like I said, for PHP files, Node.js files, or some other kind of backend language, you do need to take another step in order for this to work. We are going to be adding something called a proxy property to this in the next video, so keep that in mind. I will say that right off the bat, you do need another property for it to work with dynamic sites and backend languages. But for static sites, this is a great way to get set up and it's a really awesome tool for saving you guys time in the long run and just making development life more enjoyable overall. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. A very short tutorial, but a very, very helpful one nevertheless. In the next one, I'm definitely going to be covering the backend files because most of our day-to-day -day work is probably using some kind of backend language and it's very useful to have 
something that can refresh the pages or servers automatically for us whenever we're actually working within them and saving them. So I hope you guys enjoy this one, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Later guys!